Okay. So the fourth episode of Miss Marvel has dropped on Disney Plus, and so now, as per usual, I shall talk about it with the spoilers. That is a spoiler warning. If you have not watched this episode of Miss Marvel titled Seeing Red, and you care about spoilers, you should probably leave. If you have seen it or you don't care, then stick around. Welcome. And yeah, you may notice my energy is a little bit lower. It's because this episode, I just finished watching it for a second time. I found it to be really slow and almost kind of boring. I mean, there was some cool stuff in there for sure when it was actually in it. But I mean, the episode starts out, all right, so we're in Karachi, we're in Pakistan. And so we're exploring the city and all right, I get it. I mean, no offense to anyone who is Pakistani or is from Pakistan. It's a cool looking city, but I mean, for the first 15 minutes of this episode, I was like, all right, can we get to some like Miss Marvel stuff? I don't really care about the family. And yeah, the episode doesn't really pick up until about 15 minutes in. When Kamala's at the train station and she's found by Red Dagger, I was like, finally, all right, we got something cool. We got an action scene where the two are fighting against each other. That was cool. And so we're taken to this secret hideout where we meet this guy, Walid, and he explains what the Red Daggers are. They protect people from the threats of the unseen. Almost sounds like S.H.I.E.L.D. in a way. But they know all about the Jinn and the clandestines, which is Najma's group. And this is actually pretty interesting. Because really, we find out that Jinn is just the name that people gave to these supernatural beings. Walid even says, like, if Thor had landed on the Himalayas, he would have been called a Jinn too. So really, Jinn just means being of supernatural origin of some sort. Meaning they still could be Kree. I don't know, I'm still holding on to that, I guess. Blue arm, people. Blue arm. Except I've accepted at this point that they're probably not Kree because we learn that Najma and the clandestines, they come from a dimension that is parallel to our own. We see the map. So it's like this world that is hidden from ours, but parallel to ours, like the Upside Down or something. Except instead of creepy portals, there's a veil of Nur, this light energy that separates the two realms. And so if the clandestines manage to get a hold of the Bengal and return to their home realm, I guess the veil will be broken and the other realm will just take over ours. According to Walid, anyway. But all right, cool, we finally do get some answers. That is very much appreciated, I gotta say. I get it now, all right, the plot unveils itself. There is one scene, if I'm gonna sidetrack for a little bit, that we get between Kamala's mother and her grandmother, which I actually thought was pretty good. Cause we're actually finally diving into the character of Muniba. We're seeing why she is kind of stuck up. That heart to heart they have together, I just thought was really good. In fact, it should have been longer. It shouldn't have cut off when it did. Cause it went from, I needed my mother, to Kamala walking in and Muniba being like, let's share some toffee. I almost feel like that heart to heart scene was longer, but they cut it for some reason. Like, for time, I guess. I don't know, but I thought it was good for what they gave us. But anyway, back to the revelation. We've been hearing how, since Kamala is a child of both realms, that makes her powers unique, and I actually think that's really cool. That's why the bangle allows her to harness this hard light, the Nur. And I gotta say, I do appreciate how, yeah, since this origin and power is completely different from the comics, they decided to completely flesh it out. It's different from the original Inhuman lore, yes, but it has its own lore and backstory, having a lot more to do with Pakistani culture, which I'm guessing is very much appreciated by any Pakistani people who are watching this. I'm just guessing. Like, I dare say this almost justifies her powers being different than people know. I guess I'll decide for sure when the season ends. And also, this is the scene where Kamala gets her vest thing. It has a name. I forget what it's called but this blue vest thing that will eventually become like the main part of her outfit. So all right, she has the mask, she has the blue vest thing. Now all she's really missing is the red scarf. I'm guessing we're not actually going to see the full outfit until either the end of episode five or the sixth episode. Again, this show going for the long run. But then the clandestines attack because they broke out of the DODC Supermax prison. Although they left Kamran there because he's not on their side. I'm wondering what'll happen to him. But then we get into this whole action scene, which eh. Some of it was pretty cool, other parts of it were really shaky cam where I just couldn't keep up with it because it was too much. Like that whole street chase scene, I was like, it's too shaky, I can't... Okay. Yeah, I felt like the shaky cam was just too shaky in this case. So that's another minus for this episode. Also, Wally dies. Alright. Didn't have a whole lot of time to get to know this dude. I thought he was cool though. He certainly did give us a lot of information to work with. So thanks and farewell. We barely knew thee. But then when the street chase is over and we get to the actual combat stuff, I thought that was cool. I mean, Kamala Khan and Red Dagger, they're ready for action. I love that they strike a pose and then they get into a fight. And Kamala Khan certainly is getting a lot better at honing her power and using it in combat. I mean, extending her limbs and creating shields, the steps. All right, that's very cool. 
and eventually it gets to the point where Najma accidentally stabs the bangle. I was like, is it broken? I don't know, maybe she just broke the thing. Probably not though, if I had to guess. Although, little theory here, I'm not saying this is what I think is gonna happen, I'm just saying what if. What if the Bengal does break here, thus altering Kamala Khan's powers, so she can no longer create hard light, but instead her limbs actually extend like they do in the comics? I don't know, that's just a thought that came into my head. It's probably not gonna happen. But in any case, since the Bengal was stabbed, Kamala is now transported back in time to the partition. And so I was like, oh, okay. We've been going back to this story a couple of times now about how Kamala's grandmother followed a trail of stars. Now I guess we're gonna see that. In fact, earlier in the episode when Kamala and her grandmother are talking and the grandmother is telling the story, I thought we would get the scene in a flashback right then and there. But no, I guess now Kamala has to experience it firsthand for herself. All right, neat. But that's where the episode ended. I was like, okay, that was kind of abrupt. So we're still in Karachi in Pakistan. We're not yet back home in Jersey City and I'm guessing we're still in the middle of this fight with the clandestines. Okay. So in the end, this episode of Miss Marvel is my least favorite so far. Like I said, I just thought it was kind of slow and kind of boring. I get that this show is an origin story, but the fact that it is playing out over six episodes, again, I am getting kind of impatient. I'm like, all right, can we get to seeing Miss Marvel already? I mean, yeah, when the action happens, it is really cool when it's not super shaky cam. I guess I just wasn't expecting this show to be as slow as it is. But now that we're at the end of Act 2 and gearing up going into Act 3, hopefully the last two episodes will kick into high gear and give us an exciting finale. Only time will tell, I guess. So, Episode 4 of Miss Marvel titled Seeing Red. Have you watched it yet? What do you think about it? Are you also getting kind of bored by the slow origin story, or am I just being a dick? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go watch those Baymax shorts. Cause I love Big Hero 6 and I've been looking forward to this. Peace.